Welcome back to WonderCon 2017. I'm Mike Avila with Sci-Fi Wire, and I'm joined by writer Simon Spurrier. Hello. Who I was going to say writer of, but you have a bunch of different projects. All sorts of things, yeah. We'll start by asking you about your upcoming book for, for Boom, God Shaper, mm -hmm. um, which you are writing, you co-created with Jonas Goonface, Goonface yeah. which is the best name ever <laughs> yeah, for yeah, an artist. Yeah, it's a pretty cool name. Talk about the concept behind God Shaper because it's really, really ambitious and Super layered. High concept. It's um, it's kind of become a thing of mine that I create these these world building stories, and then people ask me to give them an elevator pitch, and I can't because they're so <laughs> complicated. Um, I've with God Shaper, I've kind of got two answers to this question. The the top one, which is the short, easy, um, it's the story of a man without a god and a god without a man who travel together across the American Midwest to get to a music festival in San Francisco. The slightly longer version is that it's, it's set in an alternate version of America where in 1958 the laws of physics broke. Uh, technology stopped working, but the very next day people woke up and found that everybody was suddenly accompanied through life by their own personal god. And the gods serve the functions of surrogate technology, um, they're kind of status symbols, people become very vain about the way that their gods look and act, uh, and most importantly their bank accounts. So the bigger your god is, the more wealthy you are, the smaller your god is, the poorer you are. If you want to pay somebody for a good or a service, you literally pray to their god, it expands and yours gets smaller. So this is a whole economy based around metaphysics rather than physics. Our central character is a man called N.A. who was born without a god. He's one of very few people who has no god of his own. Uh, it means that he's, he's a pariah. He's on the outskirts of society. He can't own anything. He cannot possess. Um, what he can do is, because he has no god of his own, he's able to kind of manipulate other people's gods. He can change the way they look, change their color. He can reconfigure the mm -hmm. stuff that they can do. And so he's obviously in great demand with normal members of society. He has a useful skill but he can't participate in wealth. He's an outlaw by all, by all real terms. And so he's this sort of traveling, itinerant, underclass character who is constantly in need wherever he goes, but nobody wants him, nobody likes him. He's kind of dirty. He's seen as a, um, a lower class uh, kind of servant type. But he has an ace card up his sleeve, which is that he is best friends with this funny little god called Bud, this cute little mischievous guy who's the only god in the world who has no believer of his own. He shouldn't exist, he's completely impossible. But together these two can pass... Sort of an orphan god? Yeah, pretty much. And that's, you know, it, it, there's a mystery around why Bud exists, how he exists. And one of the lovely things about the story is that both he and N.A. kind of resist answering that question because all they really want to do is play music in a festival. <laughs> People keep going like, oh, don't you want to know? This is kind of cool, yeah. this is weird, it's a mystery. They're like, nah, I just want to play. Um, but together, the two of them can pass as a normal unit, a guy mm -hmm. and a god, even though they have no connection to each other other than that they like each other. And it's just this very sweet story of the two of them crossing the Midwest, getting into hijinks, running afoul of some organized crime, flirting with the big mysteries that underlie this world. What went wrong in 1958? Why is the world like this? Is, that mis is, is, is the mystery of how the laws of physics broke yep. in 1958 going to be uh, one of the mis mystery yeah, under very, under very the much so, although, as I say, they, they sort of resist trying to solve it for a long time because they don't really want to know. The, the, it seems, to, from hearing your elevator pitch... It's quite well a long done, well, well done, by the way. pressing stop on uh, the elevator to give me we're, some time. We're going up a skyscraper. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's 50 yeah. floors. Um, it seems like it's, it has plenty of opportunities for you to, to offer insight and subtle commentary on lots of things that are happening much so. in the real world because much of so. the, the, uh, the high concept behind sure. this. Sure, yeah. It's, I mean, um, when you start using, well, anything, frankly, as a metaphor, but especially metaphysics mm -hmm. as a metaphor, you can use it as a stand-in for pretty much anything you want, and, and no surprise. Sure. belief on faith and spirituality. Yeah, and, and the prejudices that are yeah. you know, pretty rampant Class in our world today, all yeah. of this. I, I would argue that there is no solution to capitalism which doesn't rely upon an underclass of, of repressed people. So there's all sorts of big, heavy, high hind, uh, can't even talk, high-handed stuff going on in there, like big, mm -hmm. big chunky themes, and we explore those. But the, the beauty for me of the story is that it's a very human tale of a guy who 
everywhere he goes, people identify him as a man without a god. That's his, his thing. And he doesn't want to be known as that. He wants to be a musician. He wants people to, to listen to his weird, countercultural, beautiful music and go, that's what defines that person. But instead, all he gets is man without a god. And that's an interesting dynamic, the, the idea that we all want to be regarded as one thing, mm -hmm. but the prejudices of culture mean that we're regarded as something very different.